Hello everyone, welcome to day 6 of Remember Lead Code Challenge and I hope you had a blast on this Bhayadush festival. And now without much ado, let's look at today's question. Today's question is single number 3. In this question, we are given an array of integers and there are two types of elements that are present in this input array. The first type of elements appear twice in the input array and second type of input elements appear only once. We need to identify the elements that appear only once in the input array. Also, it is given that there are only two such elements that appear only once. The rest of the elements will appear two times in the complete input array. We need to write this algorithm in linear time complexity and we should use only constant space. Had this constant space constraint not been there, we could have counted the frequency and the question would have been really simple. We could have created a frequency map there. We could have used a set as well, but it would have added extra space to the complexity. That's why we can't go with that approach. Without much ado, let's look at the presentation that I have created for this and I'll be talking about the solution as well as the example in the PPT itself. So let's move on to the PPT. Single number three, lead code 260. And without even starting the example, let's revise how ZOR operation actually works. It states that if I ZOR 0 with 0, the result will be 0. If I ZOR 1 with 1, the result will be 0. If I ZOR 0 with 1, the result will be 1. If I ZOR 1 with 0, the result will be 1. That simply means that when you are zoring two same kind of bits, 0 or 1, the result will always be 0. And whenever we are zoring different kinds of bits, 0 or 1, the result will be 1. Now let's look at the same example that was specified in the question. The question says we are given an input array 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 5, and we need to identify those elements that appear only once. What are those elements? The first element is 3 and the second element is 5. As a first step, the question itself is a hint that most of the elements appear twice. So how can we kill those elements from the input array? We will draw all the elements that exist in the input array and that will kill all the duplicacies that exist. What would be the result after the drawing all the elements together? Let's assume that x hypothetically points to 3 and y points to 5. So let's draw each one of them one by one. So the result would contain x zor y which would be equal to 3 zor 5. So this is what we will compute as a first primary step. Let's see how is a binary representation of 3. Binary representation of 3 is 0, 1, 1. The binary representation of 5 is 1, 0, 1. When I sort these two elements together, what do I get? I get 0, 1, 1. There are few takeaways that we can draw from this result. 1, 1, 0. What are those takeaways? Let's analyze each bit one by one. The rightmost bit is set to 0. That means both the digits at the rightmost bit are same in both these elements 3 and 5. Let's move towards the leftmost bit. Now we see a 1. At 1 we can for sure say that both the digits in 3 or 5 differ from each other. One will be 0, other one will be 1 or one will be 1, other one will be 0. They can't be same because the resultant bit is set to 1. Similarly, let's look at the further leftmost bit. Again, we can see that the result is 1. That means both the bits in 3 and 5 differ at this particular position. Wherever the bit is set in the resultant answer is the area of interest for us. We can pick any set bit in the resultant answer and hypothetically, let's assume we are interested in the lowest bit set, which is this position. Which position is it? This is the first position. This is the second position. And what we will do, we will divide these complete data set into two groups. We'll try to identify those elements wherein the second position is set and those elements where the second bit position is unset. So let's draw this table uh, elements where second position is set to one elements where 
second index is set to zero. This signifies unset elements at second position. This signifies set elements at second position. So let's iterate through the input array. And what is the first element? The first element that we have is 001. So you can see that this element is unset. So we will make sure that one lies towards the second column of our tabular table. Let's walk through the next element. Next we see is two and at two we can see that the bit is set. So two falls over here. Then again we see one, one falls towards the second column here and next we see is three, three falls towards the first column. So we have two here, we have three here. Let's move ahead. Next we see a two. So two falls here. Next we see is five. Five at five, the bit is unset. So five falls here. And what we can say out of this computation, we can say that uh, these two elements will be cancelled because we are performing ZOR across all these elements. What will be left? What will be left? Three will be left as a result. And when we ZOR all these elements together, what will be left? Five will be left. So the first column will store the first element that is our an answer and the second column will store the second element that is also part of our answer. I hope you understood this complete logic. If you haven't, uh, let me just walk through the coding section and everything will be crystal clear there. I perform ZOR across all the elements that exist in this input variable. So one by one I iterate through the nums array and I update my ZOR variable. Also, you should know that zeros or any element returns that element. So that's why we have initialized zero to zero. Next, I go ahead and use an inbuilt method of Java library. I need to identify that element in which the lowest bit in the past element is set. So this will give me that particular element or index of that particular element where the lowest bit was set. So I have stored it in a variable. Then I created an answer array that is has two element two size of size two and then I again iterate over the complete input array dividing each one of them into two groups. I sort the current element with the element that I extracted from the, the lowest bit set of the sort element with lowest bit set and if it turns out to be zero that means it will lie in that column where uh, the bit is unset column where the bit is unset otherwise it will lie in that column where the bit is set and i compute zor as i progress ahead in the iteration so ans of zero would be updated to zor with ans of zero with each iteration as i have identified them into two different groups in the end i simply return the result so let's try this up accepted and you can choose any bit that was set in the answer zor it could be the lowest one bit or it could be highest one bit or it could be the at the intermediary level so you are free to choose any element where the bit is set i hope you enjoyed today's session if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye.